All right, today we are back at the beach and we got the Galaxy S10 Plus. This thing is loaded with all kinds of crazy features and specs. This thing could also take like really good still photos. So let's see here. Hey Sam, what's up? Look at this, what? I'm getting you in color, but the background's all black and white. How does this even work? Like this technology in this thing is absolutely insane. But most of you guys already know, I only really care about the video camera in this thing. And I'm still waiting for that day when this thing gets as good as one of these digital cinema cameras. And so far, it actually looks really, really good. It's 4K up to 60 frames per second. And it has three lenses back here and two lenses up here. And even the front facing camera is 4K. So that's pretty awesome. So we're gonna compare it with our cinema movie camera over here. So let's see how they look side by side. So let's start off by using the wide angle lens built into this Galaxy S10 Plus. I put a 14 millimeter lens on the red, as most of you know, that's very, very wide. But the Galaxy is able to go out even wider, which is really impressive. It's the widest angle I've seen on a phone camera yet, and I can see this being very, very useful. So check this out. This is what a standard camera would look like. See how close up it is to my face? And this is kind of the focal length you would expect out of most camera phones, but this has this option to kind of go all the way out like that. And I know a lot of vloggers that would love this option. And it's very cool. I would personally use this lens a whole lot. If we look at the side-by-side -side footage of my Jeep, you can literally see every single insect I murdered on my last road trip. And now actually looking at this footage side-by-side, -side, the Galaxy looks sharper than the cinema camera that's worth more than my dignity. So right off the starting line, the Galaxy S10 Plus looks super impressive. But there is a reason for this. Cinema cameras are generally designed to shoot flat. That way we have a little bit more playroom to adjust the images afterwards in post. And oftentimes flat images can come across as not looking sharp. So I'm gonna just do a very, very simple contrast boost to the red footage. And that's about it. I'm not gonna do much else to the images to keep everything looking fairly raw. By the way, this video is being shot at 30 frames per second because the Galaxy natively only shoots at 30 frames per second or higher frame rates. But out of the box, it does not give you access to 24 frames per second, which I usually shoot my videos at. But there are workarounds for that. There are aftermarket apps that will allow you to go into 24 frames per second if you are going for more of that cinematic look. But to keep this video simple, we're gonna set all these cameras to 30 frames per second. Now let's take a look at the dynamic range on the Galaxy S10 Plus, and it's actually really insane. On the contrary, without that much dynamic range, range, you would have to choose on exposing the sky where the foreground would be a silhouette or you can expose the foreground and blow out the sky where it just turns white. Neither of them look that good. So the fact that we do have the HDR option is sweet. And that's basically like a smart feature of taking the really bright skies and also the shadows where Sam's sitting and kind of merges them together to make one complete image where you can kind of see the details on both the shadows and the bright ends. This technique's been around for pretty much ever in the photography world, but now we're starting to see it roll in to the video field and it's awesome. And again, these are smart features that the phone is automatically detecting and applying into each shot. The red on the other hand will never automatically try to apply some sort of filter or look or any sort of effect like that. And when you look at the raw shot, you're only looking at a fraction of the information it actually gathered. So if I were to slightly tweak the red footage, we can definitely get an HDR look out of it. Sometimes HDR looks awesome, but sometimes it doesn't. The downside of HDR is if you push it too far, it can come out looking very unnatural. So sometimes out of the camera, the Galaxy can look better, but you're just kind of stuck with what the phone decides to give you. Right on the other hand, we pretty much have unlimited options on what we want to do with that footage just because we have all that raw data. Now to get that more cinematic footage, you definitely have to pay the price for it. So not just with money, which that is obviously a huge part of it, but convenience is also a huge part of it as well. Like this thing is ginormous and heavy. Sure, sometimes it's kind of cool having this big old camera. You walk around, look how big my camera is. <laughs> no, but seriously though, if you have a big camera, people think you're more legit than you actually are. But it could definitely be a hassle a lot of the times. I mean, the weight itself can get really brutal after a couple hours of carrying this thing around. If you're trying to be kind of low key and film something discreetly, like you can walk around anywhere and film with this. No one's ever gonna say a thing. But as soon as you pick up this thing, every two minutes, someone's gonna be like, hey, what are you filming? Do you have a permit for that? Can you please stop filming me? 
urinate. There's not a single smart feature about this camera. Like everything is manually controlled. You dial in every single setting. It never does anything you don't tell it to do, which is generally a good thing in a professional set. But if you're just like, oh, that's a nice shot of my kids. Here, let me record for a second. Okay, how do I upload a Facebook through this thing? Uh, the Galaxy shoots 60p in 4K, which is impressive. 4K 60, a sure way to get sharp, slow motion footage that just about always looks awesome. There's no going wrong with 4K 60. Going in a little bit more slow motion, 240 frames per second. They both can do it in full HD and the Galaxy actually looks kind of decent. You're definitely gonna notice some loss in quality on the Galaxy, but realistically, most of the time we're just having fun with this. So it's an awesome feature to have in a phone. And then we got super slow motion up to 960 frames per second, which is insanely fast, but you'd only have a 0.4 second window to shoot 960 frames per second, which is super fast. You blink, you'll miss it. And I did actually find it pretty challenging to get some super slow-mo shots within that 0.4 second window. A lot of times I would just get right before or right after the action I wanted to capture. So with that very short 0.4 second window and that very low resolution, obviously it's not ideal, but the red doesn't even offer 960 frames per second. So I'll take it. I mean, two weeks ago when we shot that super slow motion video, we had so much fun with a thousand or five thousand frames per second once you realize how different things look at 960 frames per second it's really fun now the s10 plus does have the ability to shoot in the hdr 10 plus format and this is separate from the auto hdr mode i know the whole hdr thing can be a little bit complicated but yeah unless you have your entire workflow figured out in hdr 10 plus i wouldn't be in any rush to put it in this setting now my biggest reason for not loving the way camera phones look is what maddie hapoya describes as sharpness versus detail some of these cameras are really sharp, but they don't necessarily have a lot of detail, which the cinema cameras definitely have the detail, but they aren't necessarily super sharp. For example, the DJI drones, they're very sharp. So they're adding a lot of post sharpening or in-camera sharpening, but there's not much detail. When you zoom in, there isn't all this detail in, let's say the grass or the trees. It's kind of just all mushy, but it's sharpened mushy. And it seems like camera phones still don't have the proper hardware to make everything look super super detailed. So they generally try to compensate by just sharpening out the edges. And a lot of times it can look good, but sometimes it can sharpen out things like pores or wrinkles or other things that aren't super flattering. And again, professional cameras like the RED take a different approach and they don't try to digitally sharpen much. They just kind of capture what's there with as much detail as possible. So it just does a better job of just seeing things as it sits naturally. So a lot of times faces just look more flattering on a cinema camera. Let me show you what this camera looks like if I pump up the sharpness a little bit. And there, look at that. My skin looks like sandpaper, right? Because it's trying to just gather any sort of details and contrast and it just like sharpens it. Not great. I'm going to turn the sharpening back down. <laughs> Looking at the zooming options, again, you have your standard 1x zoom. You could zoom out to 0.5 and you could also zoom into 2x. And that's awesome. If I were to design a phone, it would literally just be like brrr, a bunch of lenses back here. It would barely be able to make a phone call or send a text. The telephoto lens on the Galaxy is a 2x zoom, so that's useful, but obviously the red's still gonna have an advantage because it has like thousands of lenses it could choose from. So if you wanna zoom way in, the red still looks brilliant, but the Galaxy is compensating like crazy with its sharpness. And we all love that shallow depth of field or basically getting that background blurry while your subject's in focus. The Galaxy has the ability to kind of fake that in the photo world, but can't really fake it in video yet. Who knows, maybe we'll start seeing that in the future, but the red camera obviously just naturally looks like that. It's a cinema camera and it looks cinematic. The RED camera doesn't have anything built in to stabilize the footage. If you want it to be stable, you have to put it on like a gimbal or steady cam. The Galaxy has a super stable mode on. So clearly if you're just walking around handheld, the Galaxy is gonna look more stable, a big, big plus. Once we start losing that sun and we enter low light territory, the RED still looks sharp. You could tell that the phone's trying to do everything it can to try to make that image look as nice as possible, but a lot of it just looks kind of artificial and, and clumpy. But the Galaxy can shoot with an f1.5 f-stop. So in the world of camera phones, this is definitely a leap forward. And honestly, I'm trying to think about what camera phones are gonna look like 10 years from now. I'm curious what mirrorless cameras are gonna look 10 years from now. What's a cinema camera gonna be like 10 years from now? It's really hard to imagine because 10 years ago, a camera phone was just like utter shit. 
in the mirrorless camera space, we're definitely seeing smaller sensors come out that are actually really powerful and surprisingly look really great. So the technology is definitely on its way and in development. Anyways, I feel like I should cut my hair. It's kind of growing out kind of long. I'm heading to NAB in a few days. Let's do this. Sam! Yes. No, we're multitasking today. We're gonna read some comments from my last video, which was all about the Aperture 120D Mark II, which is my favorite video light. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <shit. laughs> What did you do? Make sure I don't look crazy going to NAB. Are you sure you know what you're doing? I'm going to NAB. <laughs> I need to look good, okay? Uh, you are literally just taking all the hair off the top. I'm gonna have a bald spot on the top. <laughs> I don't tell you how to do your job, you tell me how to do mine. I'll just do it myself, dude. I just, I don't need your help. This is easy. Why do barbers exist? Why don't you just do it ourselves? This is so good. Do I look jacked up now? Sam, I need you to unfuck this. Anthony Burnett says, random skill to learn. Mastering a pogo still? Oh my God, Sam, you're fired. Wait, wait, but fix my hair before you leave. How about doing a handstand or a backflip? Backflip, I don't know. Now that I'm 30, like my body hurts when I fall. Like sometimes I'm like, Maybe I should try skateboarding and I'll try to do one trick and fall on the ground and I'll like be in the worst pain ever. When I was 20, I can like fall on my face and just scrape up my body. I'll get up and be like, no problem. Andy says, learn how to stack dice. What did I tell you about? Oh, let's do a fire. Get out of here. I guess this is going to be my hair for NAB. I can't trust Sam cutting my hair anymore. It's